goodness, Marilyn. You must have put a lot of effort into this. Miss Hexshaw, you'll just never know. That's right. Miss Hexshaw probably never will know the whole story behind Marilyn's last assignment in English, too. How's it coming, Lynn? So there I was at 20,000 feet. Hey, what's this big treaty on, anyway? Perhaps you mean treat it? Brother. Get this, Carol. Hmm? What does the emancipation of American women mean to you? Emancipation? Yeah, liberation, etc. How about women's right to stand up on buses and streetcars? Then, how about the modern gal's right to go Dutch when her dreamboat's out of ready? Oh, Betty, be serious. We have to help Marilyn. Do Monday, you said? That's right, Carol. I know. Women's right to vote. Why, it's the biggest thing that's happened to women since... Since Adam's apple. Carol, you sweet dumb thing. Pull up your flaps. You're dragging. Hey, wait a minute. I'm having enough grief over this thing. <sighs> There's only one thing I'm sure of. For Miss Heckshaw, it's got to be the modern approach. Say, hey, let's look around the kitchen. Um, something about new freedom in our own home. Electricity. Uh, gas. Mechanical servants, you know, something about, um, oh, freedom from drudgery. Sort of like that. Oh, you mean like today we women have it easier than the pioneers. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Carol. Oh, my gosh. That's a terrific angle. Talk about emancipation. Take the family wash, for instance. No more clotheslines. No more dark basements. No more blue Mondays. Boy, here's real emancipation from old-fashioned chores. Just set a dial and walk away. Well, that's the kind of emancipation any woman can understand. Well, what do you think of our complete home laundry as a subject for my theme? Great for you, but what about the rest of us peasants? What? We don't got it. We don't happen to have anything like this at home. Oh, well, just the same. It's still a good subject for... We neither. Ours are so old and rackety. You mean rickety, Carol. I mean you can hear it all over the house. Papa's so stubborn. Stubborn? Men are plain inconsiderate. I just wish my father had to wash a few clothes instead of just getting them dirty. Mine, too. Emancipation. Fine. I could use a little. Say, it might be crazy, but if it works, you'll have your emancipation and I'll still have a valid theme. Talk sense. I have a plan. A plan? Mm -hmm. It's a thousand to one, but it might work. Then give. Well, the whole trouble is your mother's. Huh? Well, they just don't understand men. Then what am I doing here? <laughs> They're using the wrong approach. You've got to let your father sell themselves. You mean so they'll think the whole thing is their idea? Exactly. But how? This weekend, we get our mothers up to the lake. And we let the men stay here. And make sure they do the wash. Right. And Carol, you're elected to get Mr. Walligan on our side. Mr. Walligan? Mr. Walligan, please. If you'll just make sure that you have two complete laundries ready to deliver this Saturday. Two complete laundries? So, this weekend, you men can have that complete, uninterrupted cribbage game you're always talking about. Of course, you'll have to do Mother's washing while we're away. Oh, no, Mother. Uh, let Daddy do the wash while we're away. But, but why, Marilyn? Well, uh, because... Well, because you need a holiday. Golly, what took you so long? Where's Carol? Right behind me. Good. 
You girls forget anything. We sure hope not. May it all come out in the wash. You make lemonade, Jim? Must have been Marilyn. I found it in the refrigerator. <laughs> By golly, this is it, you know. Oh, wait a minute, George. I'd like to make a toast. Sure, Charlie. Who to? Uh, uh, Jim, to whom? Why, to our recently departed. Who else? <laughs> yes, sir, boys. Here's to our gang of little women. On a well-earned holiday. And a memorable weekend for us all. Snuff. Oh, excuse me, George. Go ahead. I'll be right back. Hmm. This is not bad. Oh, jump a gee, hustle fat. What's wrong, Jim? Oh, I promised Nancy I'd finish the wash, but I didn't figure on anything like this. Yikes! Holy smoke! That reminds me, I promised to do the wash, too. So did I. Well, come on, George. We might as well get it over with. Now, wait a minute. You can do that tomorrow. What about the cribbage game? You kidding? With this on your hand? Oh, there's no bother. It's no trick to do the wash with this baby. And we can go right on playing cribbage. Automatic, huh? Oh, you betcha. Well, this is a real nice setup you got here, Jim. Oh, I don't know. Clara keeps harping on an automatic laundry. But look at you, Jim. What do you mean? Well, we men keep making it easier for women to do their work. And the next thing you know, we're doing it. Yes, I'll admit there's very little labor left for ladies these days. You're darn right. You take this washer here. I do. I mean the way it's designed so a child can run it. Um, I mean, uh, speaking as an engineer. Uh, well, what I mean is, you, you take the basic design. All you do is work out a system of pumps, and uh, then you hook in some uh, uh, different valves, and... Uh, then, uh, well, that's not precisely what Tom Walligan told me. George, look. Well, of course, there's a lot Mr. Warren couldn't be expected to know. But to an established company in the home laundry business, how it's made is a point of engineering concern that goes back a long way. Some 53 years, in fact. Inelegant now, these washers met the need in their day. And they set a course of valuable engineering experience. A course leading, inevitably, to today's ingenious automatic washer. Even so, how do you go about designing a new automatic washer? Well, first of all, you begin some eight years before you decide the machine is ready for homemakers. And you begin by checking with the ultimate user herself. The first request was for an automatic washer that would get clothes as clean as standard ringer models. That meant an agitator type. How to engineer this fine idea into an automatic washer with a spin basket was a problem yet to be solved. The second request was for a method of saving suds and hot water, something the engineers themselves had long thought about. But again, figuring out how to save and reuse hot suds in a compact automatic washer with a single tub was a stiff engineering challenge. The third request was for adaptability, an automatic washer that would still let a housewife do her washing the way she wanted to do it. That meant a flexible time and cycle system. To these three basic demands, the engineers added one of their own, an automatic washer so well balanced it wouldn't need bolting down. So armed with what would be right in an automatic washer, your lab men proceed to find out what's wrong with existing types. And then the fun begins. 
Most good ideas start out as problem children. It is the design engineer's job to make them adoptable. The engineer usually has a team of draftsmen to help him translate ideas into working parts. And with time and patience and trial after trial, one of your brain children at last becomes socially acceptable. You have a flexible timer. Another, the agitator, in time gets a superior twin. Again, after many tests and rejections, you finally come up with the agitator you want. One that does an even better job of washing clothes than originally requested. But here, in the Suds return system, you find an engineering challenge so typical it hurts. That of developing a simple good idea into a good simple design. Starting from scratch, the first exploratory attempt was crude. The engineers tried an electric motor, an automobile pump, and a siphon line into the washer tub. The first unit was manually operated through a separate switch, and the water returned through the top opening of the washer tub. No good. In time, a two-way valve development got rid of the siphon hose, but the new pump still hung on the side of the tub, still unsatisfactory. Then both motor and pump were hidden beneath the washer and a new problem was born. In this position, the pump now required precisely a pint of priming water to start its suds return action. A coffee can held just enough, but soon became a brightly painted, specially designed priming can. Eventually, the priming can became an aluminum derby hat, itself subject to further improvement. After many other refinements, the engineers finally released the unit to production. A good, simple design. It works beautifully. This baton-like affair is a steel rod with a hard rubber ball at each end. Believe it or not, the rubber ball is used to eliminate bounce. Again, eventually, a simple design the ball rod suspension system is the engineer's unique answer to their own problem. A perfectly balanced machine that needn't be bolted down. And these, of course, are just some of the things George Warren couldn't be expected to know about automatic washers and how they're made. Carol? Yeah? Are you sure you gave Mr. Walligan the right number? Relax. He isn't supposed to call until 6 o'clock. And it's not 6 o'clock. You're right, Jim. You're right. What? Now what do I do, Jim? Have you got all the clothes in? Yep. I close the lid and set the timer for about, uh, four, 12 minutes. That's all very true. To a woman, the most important thing is how it looks. Yes, yeah, styling was important to Nancy, sure. You know? When a thing's engineered right, it's beautifully simple. Simple. That's exactly the point. Appliances? Why, it's the same with furniture, automobiles, houses, anything. If you want to make it easy to live with for a long time, it's got to be made simple. Simple and functional. That's all there is to styling. Well, at least that's what I always say. And, Mr. Danning, it is easier said than done. How do you go about styling a new automatic washer? As with engineering design, you begin long before the first washer ever goes into production. It is a process of patient deliberation over hundreds of styling ideas. Eventually, you get down to a half dozen final selections and minute details of form, balance, color, and working requirements. Here, for instance, is a pleasing design. Good form, nice balance, deft use of color. But it was rejected. You'd have to raise a second lid to place your clothes in the tub. Here's another idea, equally attractive at first glance. But chrome trim, like seasoning in food, has narrow limits of tolerance. So, partly because of over-seasoning, and again because raising the whole top seemed unnecessarily cumbersome for women, another rejection. So it goes, with rejections and refinements, measured always against the best interests of the ultimate user, leading at last 
to the one best styling design. A clean line simply designed purely functional beauty and the long search is over. It is worth the effort because even though the average person, Charlie Danning for instance, may not know why, he finds it easy to live with for a long time. Don't you ever inhale? Go ahead and deal. <laughs> and stop gloating. <laughs> Never figured to peg out on both of you. <laughs> it won't happen again, I assure you. <laughs> Wait a minute, Jim. Let this one be on me. Well, I suppose Nancy be lost without it now. Without what? Well, that complete laundry outfit. Oh, yes, I guess she would. <laughs> Marilyn, too. I guess we all would. Service is expensive, huh? Oh. Does that mean it isn't? Or you don't know? Both. We haven't needed service yet. But I'm sure Tom Mulligan stands squarely behind everything he sells. You can say that again. Tom Mulligan handles only the best. And he backs it up with good service. At least that's what I've always heard. A good name worthy of friend-to-friend -friend advertising is a very desirable asset. To be a permanent asset, it must stem directly from the manufacturer and be continuously built into the product. Without effort, it is not easily gained. Without constant vigilance, it is easily lost. At the plant in St. Joseph, Michigan, constant vigilance goes by a simpler name. They call it quality control, and it starts with incoming materials and extends throughout all plant operations. You find quality control in precise laboratory tests made before any quantity shipments of materials are accepted. You find quality control in giant operations that keep in mind the human factor. For safety's sake, all hands must be on the starter buttons before this press will operate. You find quality control in specially designed machines, such as this tangent bender. For greater strength, it forms the automatic washer cabinet from one piece of sheet steel. Then an automatic welding machine called a stitch welder completes the one piece construction. And you find quality control in better ways to do such things as painting. These ingenious automatic paint sprayers lay on an incredibly smooth, even finish through electrical attraction, an entirely new principle. But most of all, you find quality control in specific checkpoints, not only at the finished stage, but at every step of the way. More than 10% of the workers here are quality control inspectors and you find them checking every part of every machine. Every base plate assembly is checked to make sure the supporting studs are perfectly aligned. In soundproof, quiet rooms, running tests of all moving parts are made. In this instance, the gear case assembly. Every one is tested before it moves on. The heart of the suds return system is the two-way valve. Every one is checked for possible leaks before it moves on. In other quiet rooms along the final assembly line, every completed machine gets final working tests before it is tagged satisfactory. And you'd think then they'd be satisfied. They're not. Every day, accepted machines are pulled off the lines. They're given complete and punishing test runs, just to make sure, again.
there's a good reason for all this concern with quality control, how to maintain the flow of mass production and maintain the highest quality standards at the same time is always a problem. But there is only one answer to the problem here. It is supplied by daily reports of quality control. If they should indicate serious trouble, there is a man here with power enough to say, stop the line. Actually, there has never had to be a stoppage of production such as this. Quality control itself is the safeguard. New methods, better equipment, constant checking keep the rhythm of production on a 24-hour beat. advertising is worth all the effort. Carol, why don't you go in the water? Oh, I'm too lazy. Oh. Honestly, if Mother wonders out loud just once more how the men are making out, I'll scream. I wonder myself. Well, that's a mighty neat job if I do say so myself. Hey, Jim. Won't Nancy be surprised to see this? <laughs> more likely amazed, Charlie, amazed! Oh, I don't know. No more than Claire and Emmy when they find out about your hidden talent for washing clothes. <laughs> I've still got our wash to do. Me too. <laughs> Say, Charlie. I suppose Emmy, uh... Yes, George, just like Clara, week after week. Why? Why not? They kind of deserve it. So let's really surprise them both. You mean the whole works just like this? 
What do you think, Jim? I think you two birds have been stalling your wives long enough. You can afford to give them a real holiday. Come on! <laughs> Nuts. What's the matter? Tom Walligan. Suppose he is still there. How do we know that he's prepared to deliver two complete laundries at this short notice? Well, why don't I call him? If he's still there, I'll explain the situation. <laughs> Fine! Just a few minutes. Please. But, Miss Danning, I gotta close up now. I know, I I know you want to leave and everything, but... Yeah, well, with my wife, I gotta have good reasons for missing dinner. But I'm sure she will understand. Line's busy. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Yeah? Well... Hey, that means he's still there. Come on, Charlie. Keep calling Jim. Tell him we're on the way. Okay, fellas. So you can see how important it is to us, Mr. Walligan. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure you girls had a very good idea there, but... but. Remember the suffering jets, Mr. Walligan? They never gave up till they won the woman's vote. No siree. Talk. I don't know what to say. Say anything. <laughs> The Bougainvillea are too. My mother has a new trellis in our house. And Paul Revere riding all night up and down the countryside, shouting to the people, the British are coming, the British are coming, and... Glory be, the British are coming. Okay, kids, you win. And none of us had the faintest idea. Clara and Emmy are simply delirious. Just imagine George and Charlie taking the notion just like that. Well, what is the matter? Well, I was checking my theme at breakfast. Oh, yes. My goodness, Marilyn, you must have put a lot of effort into this. Mother, you'll just never know.